right. Take your Bible tonight. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. Now we're on the third chapter. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. We're doing, dealing with part 1 tonight on rose petals for our path. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. And uh, so let's have a word of prayer and we'll get into it. Now, Lord, thank you again for the evening. We pray, Lord, as we meet together tonight that you would help us to glean the wonderful truths that are found in this portion of Scripture. We pray as we deal with part one tonight, Lord, that we might learn things that will help us to be better Christians. And Lord, if there are any folks here tonight that do not know you as their Savior. Lord, we pray that they'll make the same decision as those two boys did this morning and trust you as their Savior. Lord, help me as I preach. Give me power. Help me to preach with clarity. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Now, if you have ever been to a wedding, you know that many times rose petals are sprinkled by the flower girl on the aisle that the bride will be walking. You could say that the petals give direction laid down by another for the path that the bride will follow. The petals are beautiful as well as lovely. They, uh, rose petals, they, they have a sweet fragrance to them. In fact, rose petals are used in products that improve your health. They help you to, to, to be healthy. Some boys looking for some kind of sign about a girl that they like or love will pluck the petals of a rose saying, she loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. Now if I ever did it, I would always end, she loves me, amen. Well, rose petals provide sweet memories also. Some dry out uh, uh, those rose petals that they love and they keep them after special events as reminders of that event or the person that gave that rose to them. In fact, years ago, I was doing some cleaning in our church auditorium and found... Uh, a rose petal under that back pew there, right on the end, and it was left behind my, by my daughter's wedding that had taken place several weeks earlier. It brought a smile to my face as I thought about the wedding. Well, when I read these five verses in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 through 5, rose petals popped up in my mind. That's where I got the title, okay? I viewed the truths in these verses as rose petals. They are beautiful truths. They're lovely. They're fragrant. They improve our spiritual health. And they provide direction and the right, the right path for the bride of Jesus Christ to follow. When followed, they will provide sweet memories and they will provoke reminders for us of the truths we know and need to practice in our lives. So let's begin to take a look at the rose petals for our path. Look at 2 Thessalonians 3, look at verse 1 and 2. We see, first of all tonight, the petals of request for prayer. Verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. So this portion of Scripture opens up with the word finally, which introduces the last major section of the book of 2 Thessalonians. 
It is from the word lopion, which means besides or for the rest. That's what the word means. The word does not indicate that this letter is closing. It indicates that there is more to follow. And something remains that he wants to talk about. Something he wants to address. The word finally is a transition word. It's, a, it's like a bridge word. In this chapter, Paul transitions from prophetical issues that we have been talking about to practical living issues. It changes from Paul praying for the Christians to these Christians praying for Paul. There's a change. The Thessalonian church church needed prayer, but they also needed to do this. They needed to pray for other people. This word praise in the present tense, which means that the apostle was requesting that the Thessalonian church continually pray for him. Face it, wouldn't you like somebody to be continually praying for you? Oh, me too. What a blessing it is for anyone to have others praying for him or her. Listen, if you have people saying, I'm praying for you, you ought to thank God for those folks. I get... I get uh, Notes all the time from pastors in the Philippines saying, we're praying for you, pastor. We're praying for Lincoln Land Baptist Church. Man, I write them right back and I say, thank you for your prayers. You just keep it up. Keep praying for me. And you know what? If somebody says, we're praying for you, you just tell them, yes, please keep it up. Keep it up. I need all that I can get. Thank God for those people who pray for us. Prayer is the great resource for every Christian. Even if you're 5, if you're 10, 15, or 25, or 65, prayer is a great resource for you. What we cannot do ourselves in our own strength, we many times can accomplish through our prayers to God Almighty. Well, Pastor, does God hear my prayer? I'm only 7 years old. Yep, He hears your prayers. Well, I'm 17. Does he give me the time of day? Yeah, he gives you especially 17. Yeah, he's going to give you the time of day. If you're 77 years old, he's going to give you the time of day. He hears your prayers. Let me say it's vital that you are praying to the Lord and not to some idol, not to some saint or some pagan god. Don't be praying to that junk. Prayer is beautiful. It's beautiful like a rose because of the one who is glorified, magnified, honored by the prayer. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who invited us to pray to him. He says, come on, I want to hear from you. I don't know about you, but I like that. He is the one who gives me the time of day and hears my prayers. He is the one that answers our prayers and provides for our needs. Got any needs right now in your life? Talk to the Lord about it. Oh, I don't know if that'll work. Well, that's your problem. That's a problem. You get rid of that doubt. Put it in the garbage can and say, Lord, I need some help right now, and I'm looking to you to help me out. Do that. He is the one who solves our problems. He gives us direction. He gives us wisdom and solutions for decisions that we need to make. He is the one that forgives our sins. He cleanses our hearts. And He saves our souls by putting our trust and faith in Him. If you're here tonight and you don't know if you're going to go to heaven when you die, if you'll ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, forgive you of your sin, cleanse you, and tell Him you're trusting Him to take you to heaven, He'll save you tonight! He'll do it tonight! And it'll be the best decision you've ever made because that decision is going to affect what happens to you for the rest of eternity. So it's a very important decision. Like a honeycomb that is oozing 
and dripping with golden honey drops of sweetness. The Bible drips with promises from God about prayer. Oh, they're wonderful promises. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help, find grace to help in time of need. James 5.16 Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, he says. Psalm 34, 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Oh, I like that. And his ears are open unto their cry. You got a need in your life? Cry out to the Lord. His ears are open to you. Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. You want to see some incredible things happening? Call unto the Lord. Psalm 50, verse 15, And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Psalm 145, 18. The Lord is nigh or near unto all them that call upon Him, to all that call upon Him in truth. Isaiah 65, 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. Did you catch that? Huh? Before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Luke 11, 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. That's a great promise. Whoa, wait a minute, James 1.5. If any of you lack wisdom, how many of you ever felt like you've lacked wisdom? Huh? I've, I feel that way all the time. If any of you lack wisdom, go to Walmart and buy it on sale. Is that what it says? No, 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 that doesn't say that. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, not chintzy, not cheapy, liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Praise the Lord. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. That's the hope of America tonight. John 15, 7, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. My, 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 we have a smorgasbord of prayer promises that we can pick and hold on to. I don't know about you, but I want to just hold on to all of them. Just like when you go to a buffet, some of you, you just try everything in the buffet. Well, you know what? We need to hold on to all those promises. Christians have been able to accomplish much throughout history because of prayer. They have shared their thoughts about prayer. Uh, John Piper observed prayer is the splicing of our limp wire into the lightning bolt of heaven. God loves to bless His people, but even more, 
He loves to do it in answer to prayer. You know why? Because God gets the glory. God gets the honor. Pastor E. M. Bounds wrote a great book on prayer. And he said, God has of His own motion placed Himself under the law of prayer and has obligated Himself to answer the prayers of men. He has ordained prayer as a means whereby He will do things through men as they pray, which He would not otherwise do. R.A. Torrey wrote, Prayer is the key that unlocks all the storehouses of God's infinite grace and power. All that God is and all that God does is at the disposal of prayer, but we must use the key. Prayer can do anything that God can do, and as God can do anything, prayer is omnipotent, he says. Hudson Taylor was an English missionary to the country of China. He founded the China Inland Mission, which became miraculously influential for God in the country of China. You know, we, have, we get a lot of problems from China, but you need to pray for the Christians that are in the country. There's a lot of Christians in China. They're in underground secret churches, but they're worshiping the Lord and they're telling their friends and family about Jesus Christ. Even at the expense of being persecuted or even imprisoned, perhaps even put to death, they're still serving the Lord. Well, at his death, the mission included 205 mission stations with more than 800 missionaries and 125,000 Chinese Christians. God did all that in answer to prayer. Now, how did he do it? He discovered it is possible to move men through God by prayer alone. Learn to pray. Learn to get a hold of God. But pastor, I'm just a little kid. That's all right. You learn to pray. Start learning how to pray now. Some of the best, best prayers are children. Why? Because they have implicit faith. They have total confidence in God. You know, when Paul said to these folks, Brethren, pray for us. He was demonstrating an attitude of humility and meekness as well as vulnerability and his own limitations. See, pride says this. Pride says, I don't need God, and I don't need prayer in my life. Seeking the prayers of other people demonstrates the value, the importance, and the belief in the power of prayer. Paul requested the prayers of these Christians. So what were his prayer request. Well, here's the first one. The removal of obstacles and rapid spread of God's Word. He says, pray for us that the Word of the Lord may have free course. The Word of God is like a beautiful rose. Its fragrant truths encourage, enlighten, they energize and excite the Christian. The comfort we find from the scriptures are like soft rose petals. How many of you have taken a rose petal and, and you put it on your face like this? Have, have any of you ever done that? Isn't it nice and soft? Huh? It's wonderful. Paul said, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Romans 15, 4. God's Word is a source of great comfort for the Christian if the Christian will take his nose and get it in the book. Paul prayed that the Word of the Lord would have free course. The present tense here indicates that it would continually have free course. 
course. You say, well, what is that? What's, what's he talking about? That word course is from the word treco, which means to run or walk in haste. How many of you in your neighborhood have ever seen ladies or men walking in, their, in the neighborhood, but when they're walking, they're, like, they're walking like this? You ever seen them do that? Walk real fast and stuff? To me, it looks funny, okay, but, I, I, but they're, that's what they're doing. They're trying to get good exercise. They walk in haste. It also means to spread rapidly or speed onward, to make progress. Well, that's what he was wanting to happen in the Word of God. The word was used to describe an, an athlete running a race. It was the desire of the Apostle Paul that the message of the Scriptures not be hindered in any way at all, not be hindered at all. That's what I've been praying for in our church. Lord, help our church and help the preaching of your word have free course and total liberty to work in the hearts of our folks or anybody that comes through those doors. Well, he prayed that the gospel would not be hindered at all, but that it would spread, the, the gospel would spread quickly and that the preaching of it would accomplish the purpose in saving souls and transforming lives. That's how people change. That's what does people good is the salvation that they receive by putting their faith in Jesus Christ that they hear through the preaching of the gospel. You know, unfortunately, one of the greatest hindrances to, uh, to the hindrance of scriptures today, one of the greatest hindrances is the church. It's the church. Many preachers today have neglected to preach the scriptures and they have replaced their sermons with philosophy or speeches that are empty of God's truth. They neglect the scriptures because of their laziness to study them. Listen, studying God's word is hard work, beloved. Those of you that prepare Sunday school lessons or have prepared to preach in the pulpit, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, preachers don't, they just don't like to study anymore. In fact, when, I've, when I have preached at Bible conferences and I've preached about studying the Word of God and spending time in, in, in the Scriptures and studying them and, and not buying your sermons at Walmart when they're on sale and stuff like that. Oh, I'll tell you what, it gets really quiet in the auditorium. And you're preaching to a bunch of preachers that ought to be saying, Amen, that's right, you know. It gets real quiet. Because a lot of preachers don't take time to study. You know, they are lazy in studying the Scriptures. Some of them, they don't preach the Scriptures because they don't believe in them. Some of them because they have spiritual, they have serious spiritual problems in their own lives. And not only that, they don't preach the Scriptures because they, their congregations don't want to hear what the Bible has to say. And so they worry about upsetting people, so they just, they just pull back the reins on any kind of Bible preaching that anything has a sting to it at all. You know, it would be better if these men were not preachers at all and be replaced by a man who will preach the Bible and they will stand up for what God says. There used to be a day in this country where the pulpits were hot and on, and on fire. But boy, a lot has changed in the last 50 years. Uh, Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. You say, preacher, what does that mean? The preacher, the preacher has a problem with his ear? Yeah, he does have a problem with his ear. A preacher with itching ears is a one who listens to what's popular with the people and he preaches what's popular. And he wants to make sure that he doesn't say anything that's going to upset people or make them mad. That's a preacher with itching ears. Folks, since the, very, since the very beginning of prophets of God in the Old Testament, there has been a battle over the preaching of God's Word. It, the battle continues even today. In fact, Zechariah, here's what Zechariah said. This was going on in his day. Zechariah 7:11. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears. That means... Stop their ears, that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, almost hard like a diamond, lest they should hear the law 
and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets, therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Listen, beloved, prayer empowers the preaching of God's word. That's why I've asked you to pray for me so when I get up here that I have power as I preach and that God's spirit will work in the lives of people who are listening to the message. Uh, it's important for a pastor to pray for their, peace, their preacher. You know, John, Livis, John Livingston of the country of Scotland, he once spent a whole night with a company of his brethren in prayer for God's blessings. All of them together were beseeching the throne of God, pouring out their hearts to the Lord. Well, the next day, under the preaching of the sermon that he made that day, 500 people trusted Christ as their Savior in the service in answer to prayer. The gospel had free course in that service in Salzburg, Scotland. Jonathan Edwards, many of you have heard of Jonathan Edwards. He preached a powerful message entitled, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. People were under such conviction in that church service that some of them were grasping, they were clutching, they were holding on to the pillars of the church. That church had pillars. They were holding on to the pillars because they felt like their feet were sliding into the pit of hell. They were under so much conviction. I'd like to have been in that service. The, the secret of the sermon, however, is known by very few people. There were some Christians in the vicinity of Enfield, Massachusetts, that had become alarmed that while God was blessing other places, the Lord should in anger pass by them. They were worried the Lord was going to pass them up. So they met on the evening preceding the preaching of that sermon by Edwards. And they spent the whole of the night in agonizing prayer. And the result was the free course of the gospel in that church service. The power was so great that the people thought they were slipping into hell. That's power, folks. That's power. Well, what else did Paul pray for? He paid for, prayed for reverence, recognition, and radiance of the scriptures. He says, pray for us that the word of the Lord be glorified even as it is with you. The glory, the honor, the acceptance, or the reverence for the scriptures is another rose petal that blesses the heart of those who need them, who heed them, and feed on their truths. In fact, the present tense is used here, meaning that the scriptures would continually be glorified and responded to in a positive manner, just as the Thessalonians responded this way. Understand that there, there is across the world there is a hunger for the scriptures. We may not see it here in America, but across the world when there, where there is no Christ scriptures, there's a great hunger for them. The May 2022 issue of the broadcaster shared this wonderful story about God's word. Al Braley is the director of Bearing Precious Seed, which it prints Bibles in all kinds of different languages. And in November 2021, just a number of months ago, he had the opportunity to purchase 32 rolls of 20-pound Bible printing paper. The normal cost for this amount was around $40,000. Al, however, could get the paper for 
$5,000. That was a great deal. But the supplier said to him, now, he said, Al, there's a catch to this deal. The color of the paper is not white. The color is canary yellow. Canary yellow is a very, very light, light yellow color. In fact, my mom had a 1972 Camaro that was canary yellow. I loved that car. He had a black competition stripe across the front, had black vinyl top, and it had white interior. Oh, it was so good. It had a 350 engine in it. But anyway, I just loved it because it was canary yellow. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, Al responded. And he said, canary yellow? What will I do with that? And Al thought about it some more and thought. And then he thought, if someone has never seen a Bible, that person does not know that the pages are supposed to be white. So Al said to the supplier, very decisively, he said, Send the paper. I'll find a use for canary yellow paper. I did not know that the Lord had already had a plan for that yellow paper. God, had all, God was already working behind the scenes. Three months passed, and this paper still had not been used while Bibles in other languages were being printed on ordinary white paper. But then something happened on February 24th, 2022. Russia invaded Ukraine. The Russian bombing created a massive exodus of thousands of refugees to other countries. Fear gripped the people who were clawed by that Russian bear. The Ukrainian people were desperate and they sought the Lord for help. Christians begged the West to pray and send Bibles now. Send Bibles now to these people who were now hungry for God. The time was right. Well, Bearing Precious Seed launched into action and they printed 70,000 Ukrainian New Testaments on all things canary yellow paper that had a beautiful cover of royal blue. The brilliant choices of colors made perfect sense since the Ukrainian flag is royal blue and canary yellow. Pardon me while I shout, Amen! God had it all lined up and ready to go. Al Braley affirmed with assurance, only God could have planned this. I know I have nothing to do with it. He made that very clear. God and his word were glorified by the scriptures that were printed in canary yellow paper and had a royal blue cover. You know, I don't know about you, but I think God is so awesome. He really is. Beloved, reverence and honor for the Bible is the outcome of the obedience of Christians to God's word. Obedience to the scriptures, scriptures brings blessing, it brings joy and delight, just like a rose to those who receive one. May the Bible have free course in this church always. But most importantly, may the Bible have free course in you, in your heart, Get in the Word and let God speak to you. I don't care if you're five or six years old. You can learn to get in the Bible and start reading it. You can have your mama or daddy read it to you. You can ask them questions. But we'll let the Scriptures get into your heart. Let it have free course. Like a runner who's running around a track with no obstacles, no hurdles, 
just running along smoothly. May we run for Jesus Christ. Let's pray.